Thorpe. David, David Thorpe. T H O R P. T H O R P. Yeah. No E. There's no E. Okay. Many Thorpes are going to be on. It means something? I think it's from the, yeah. the Norse. Norse. From the North of England. We don't know. Uh, we'll start. Yeah. So David Thorpe. Yeah. Coming to Goa since nineteen eighty nine. Eighty nine. Eighty nine. On the first package deal with a firm called Intersun, which Intersun. ran the first package deal, direct flight from I think I don't know where it was from Gatwick, I think, yeah. and it was on a, a narrow bodied. 757, so one oil. Oh, horrific, horrific. One island, two seats on others, either side? Yeah, yes, three seats, three seats. And the price? Ah, yes. I only got the bill and it was... Uh, now, thinking about it, I had it was two weeks. Yeah. One week at the CD Goa, Donna Paula, which yeah. was... And the next week, Delhi doing the Golden Triangle. And the price at the time was six hundred and fifty-seven pounds. Which was quite which, a bit, no? Quite a bit. That was a lot of money, yes. It was a lot, lot of money. money. A lot of money. It came down later, it crashed later. Well, yeah, as the package took off. Um, and we came back again the next year, and it was the first time I've any gone, ever gone to any other country twice. Uh, and we just loved it, and we learned more about Goa because before we were shielded in this posh hotel. Yeah. Uh, you know, give you an example. A bottle of Kingfisher was 18 rupees. In those days, yeah. it was a lot of money. But down the road in the little bar, it was yeah. only 8 rupees. <laughs> and then we learned. We learned from that. So we explored more. We went from Donapura on a little ferry across Tabasco. And we got a steam train to Margot. And all that kind of thing. And we, so we explored the second year. And then... I didn't come back then because I went, wanted to see the rest of the world. So the next time I came to India was Kerala in '96, uh, which I enjoyed very much. And then we left the North Indies. Then I had, went to retire in 2000. So we didn't have the money to do all these tours. So our friends that we first met in 1989 in Sierra had come to Kanagut and been staying here for six months each year. So. We thought, let's go and see them. So we did, and we've been here ever since. What did you like about Goa? Well, I've always said, right from the word go, when I got off the plane, that first bit of drive from the airport was just something about... Something, something about, I don't know, just a magic. And I, I was so interested. But then the main thing I think I like about Goa is the people. The people are so friendly, hospitality, hospital, hospitable. Um, and we'll give you an example. After two years of not being able to come, I'm on a stick, difficult, walking up the town, instead of taking ten minutes, took two hours. Because everybody, how are you David, how are you? Absolutely magical. People... You, know, you, can't walk, you can't walk the road without being stopped ten times. No, no, we couldn't. So it, it was beautiful. And we've seen all the things that we know. There's only one man I haven't been able to see. He's very sick. And one man that's died. So all in all, it's been... Uh, we've been here about three weeks now. It's been very hard because I'm suffering with my leg. I've had to go to the hospital and get that sorted. Then I had trouble with the bank. the frozen my accounts. That's sorted. So every now, I'm happy now. After the pandemic, you've come back after a yes, year. That's right, yeah. Well, we was waiting for, we got a five-year visa, so they've, they suspended them. So as soon as I learned that that was restored, I, to come. I need to come and sort things out. And I wanted to see my lady downstairs, because I, mean, I hadn't been for two years. All my stuff's in the room. I wanted to see how they feel, and uh, to assure them that we are coming back, you know. <laughs> so. So, up back where you are. Tell us about your films, David. Well, I started making films in 1980. I was always taking pictures, but mainly slides to them days. Slides. And then me and the wife wanted to go to America. And I thought, you need cine film. So, 
the man next door, who is now 97, lent me his mirror camera, which was a wind-up thing. And I took it, and I only take a few reels because it was very expensive. But when I got it back, I tried to edit it, I had to learn how to edit it. And then, of course, no sound. No sound? No sound, it was all silent. So I tried to do, my wife was good at commentary, she did all the commentary. Was that a mistake or was that part of the... No, just the way things was. And, okay. and uh, she did the commentaries and we put it on tape. But of course, it was impossible to sync, synchronize yeah. it. So I just made some inquiries and I was sent to a man not far away, who was putting a strike on the film, the magnetic tape. I see. And from that, he led me to other people that was into making movies, and we went from that. So I've been making movies ever since. Yeah. How many have you made on, on Goa? Our friend Mario well, I've done, telling, telling us about. I've done lots of little bits, but the main one I did in 2000, which covered the whole of Goa, from the forts to everything I could, we could do. We had a car. I think I've seen that. Is it on YouTube? Could be. Yes, on YouTube. On YouTube. Then I did a number one the same year, which I called The Magic of Goa, and it was all about the people working, all the people on the big buildings and all the, doing the roads, digging holes by hand, all that kind of thing. And then in then with uh, people playing football on the beach, the Europeans having fun and the Goans having fun. Play cricket on the cricket on the car park over there, you know. On and the, then the, on the? the car park, which is now it was a cricket ground. And we filmed them doing that. Then we went to the carnival in Panjim with a bit of bit of carnival. Uh, and that was it basically. Yes, um, then since then, well I've done last year, well, the last time was here, we did maps there. Uh, I tried, I tried to film it a different way because we know it's the market, but maps is a bit more than market. So I did a little research and I found the maps that was formed on a river, which most times are. So I sought the river out, the source, which I think it is the source. And so we took a bit of that and then, and we made go for some of the distinctive things. And then obviously the market. Uh, not, not very long. Then Panjim which I've shot many, many bits of something. But I wanted to do Panjim, the old bits, and the new, where there would be pictures on the wall, and then the Fantanize. The Fantanize was the main thing. So we made a short film about that. We was going to go, we went down to Minima, filmed all that, but I decided I don't want that. So I didn't bother. Birds of what? Birds? Birds? But, oh, no, that was all filmed here mainly on that balcony, or in the garden outside, on a tripod. Uh, not all of it, some of it was taken obviously elsewhere. A lot of it was taken on a Bushnell camera, which is a, a, a trial, trial camera, you know, it runs on batteries, motion detect. I see, I see. Uh, and that took eight years, because wow. each year a new species had it. But I haven't touched it now for what, four years. And then I made the same kind of thing at home. Sorry? The same kind of thing at yeah, home. At home. At my, at my, our life, yeah. Which part of Britain that is? In which part of Britain? It's in the Midlands. Midlands. Yeah. A place called Brown Hills. Brown Hills? Yeah. It's an old mining town. An old? Mining town. Mining town? Yeah, yeah. Was. Yeah. You haven't pulled mine, have you? Please. So, David, you've seen Goa change. You've seen Goa change. You've seen Goa change quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, as you said earlier, too much? Well, well, when we first came, I mean, obviously, I didn't know much. But I would say by 2000 and 2001, when we bought a car, uh, I was able to travel around and we even went into Manarasta. Uh, I found, I searched for all the forts, every fort in Goa I found. I had a quick look at, filmed, but some of them nothing to take. Uh, reached my gas. When we first went up there, we had to climb through a window and get in at the back of us. Through a window. Window? <laughs> yeah, because it's all been restored now. Yeah. Uh, this is where? This is which fort you're talking about? Rish Magash. Rish Magash, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was all in ruin. Right. Yeah. And we had to get through a little okay. window. <laughs> okay. So, okay. so we did all that kind of thing. Um, well, and then... It's hard to say, really, yeah. Everything was just good, and the little, you know, like, like the same as 
my friend there, he likes the little bars and we like the going bars. But that's all there was, and which was good, and everybody was really friendly. And it wasn't until... It was a small place, it wasn't crowded. It wasn't so crowded. Yeah. Well, it was nice. It was simple. Yeah. No trouble. And then it wasn't until, I would say, two or five, the year of tsunami. Two or five, two or six. We got many more tourists coming in, British tourists, which we call, no, you shouldn't quote this, we call the Spanish scum. The Spanish? The Spanish scum. Spanish? Spanish scum, the riffraff, the riffraff. Okay. You don't put that in, don't put that in, no. you'll get me killed. No, the wrong type of people. Yeah. They, all they was interested in was the beach, beer, and whatever. Not interested in the people, yeah. let's say. Not all, but a lot. Yeah. And I think that spoilt the tourism. Mass tourism is, is, is a kind of a strange beast. Yeah. Uh, at some point you think you're controlling it, but it controls you. Yeah. And sure. you, you lose control of yeah. you know, its growth and direction. Well, I, I mean, in them days, we thought of ourselves as uh, travellers. Travellers. Uh, and whatever country we went to, we wanted to see how the people lived. Uh, they ate and everything. Uh, but then, as I say, later on, the tourists, I mean, they didn't have any respect for the religions, they didn't have any respect for the code of dress, you know. I mean, you'd see young white women walk up the road with nothing on. Well, not so bad now, no, people don't care, but then it was wrong. Yeah. Uh, so, I never liked that. Yeah. And I always believe you must treat everybody, even the beggar in the street, with respect. True. Okay, mm -hmm. he's in a bad state. As a human Some, being, as a human being, that's right. he, he deserves that. Some of them we know are scamming it, or, you know, yeah. but you don't know. So I always say, oh, how are you, sir? And I say, I've done my bit. <laughs> you know? What's your basic uh, background, training, and work? Mate, oh, work. Well, I started work as a landscape gardener. Yeah? And then. I joined the Merchant Navy, I and I did two years in the Merchant Navy, and that started me wanting to travel, and it taught me. Sorry. It made, wanted me to go to travel, okay. and also taught me about the people of the world. And then after that, I left. I don't know why, and I didn't have a job, and I ended up going into a factory which I didn't like. And then the finish, I got a job uh, roofing, you know, uh, yeah. industrial roofing. And then I finished, did all my working life doing that, you know, I which I made a good living, a reasonable right. living. And, right. yeah. To say, 2000, yeah, two oh, two thousand, yeah. yeah. And then I, every morning, aching, aching, oh, this is nothing. So I decided to retire. I didn't have any pension, nothing. Okay. And I thought, mm, so we, we skimped and saved and. We managed, I see. and we're still here. I see. <laughs> About your photographs? Of Phot how many photographs? Well, there's that many, but really, over the years, I've sort of took some away, and I don't know what I've got. It would take a lot to search. But mainly, it's all on video. Mainly on video. Right. I mean, I took... Well, if you go to... Well, you can't now. The public bar, Alex's bar, even the Fiesta, there's a big picture on the wall with everybody, which I put on. I see. I made a put and did a montage with all the people in. Really? And I did oh, that. What people, what people, these are the All the visitors, all the people that went to the bar, uh -huh. and in the Petrograd. And we did it each year. Each year. Like in Alex's, he's, he's got the best example now. But that was 2020, of course. There's nobody been since. And if you've got to look at that picture there, there's... More. Who's there in the picture? There's a lot. Like there's a lot of people, all the... Who are, who are some of the names? The Alex, know? the Alex and and the owners and some of the fishermen and then there's people from Britain, I see. Germany, whatever, and they're all there, you know. So and they became very close, the, the foreigners and the locals? And well, I think so, yes, yes. Yeah, almost yeah. like family? Yeah. Well, to give you an example, on the last picture we did, there was young Nevis, he said, will you do a new picture for 2020? And there was, I think, one, two, three, at least five people that their wives or the husbands had died. But he decided we must keep them on a bit longer. You know, we'll take them away when we need more space. 
But at the moment, out of respect, and he left, we left him there. Yeah. That was it. But of course, I don't think there'd be another one. Because this is up in the year. We shall see. Yeah. yeah. Who are the people you remember from those days? Oh, well. Any characters, any interesting person? Well, yes, only oh, a few. Again, you shouldn't really quote me. There was one man, Klaus, he was a German guy, and he'd been living here for years. And he used to go to a little bar in the car park called Leo's, and he used to sit there and then he'd come in. But he was a funny gentleman, very strict old school. And when he used to come into the bar, down to the pillar, he'd place his back, centralise it, centralise everything on the table so everything was equal. <laughs> But did your proper German way, you know. <laughs> of course, we used to laugh, laugh at him. Yeah. But he was, a, he was a funny character. Um, I often thought, I don't know why, why he came here, because he was a bit, I wouldn't say colourful, but a little bit, you know, racist, like, you know. Yeah. But, often, but other than that, he was OK. Yeah. He was one character. Uh, well, there was loads of people like that. Um, some good and some bad. But most of them, you know, on the whole, most of them was pretty good, you know. Yeah. One of the early visitors to Goa, Cleo Otzer, in the 60s, she passed away. She wrote a book on, uh, you know, called Goa Freaks. That is, of course, it's it's predating the charters. It's yeah. actually the, you know, between yeah. tourist time. Yeah. Yeah. And many people thought that she was not authentic enough in what she wrote about Goa. Mm. I, I mean, there are different waves and there are different trends, so, you know, each one sees yeah. it as their own yeah. story. Mm. I don't know what... Uh I don't know what else I can tell you. I mean, who, 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 are the, who are the most memorable local characters? Local? Came up well, there's a, there's a man that lives next door. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen him because I think he's pretty sick. Okay. He used to be a taxi driver. Uh, and they're still, these taxis are still running. Little man, he had a stroke. And his name's Sonil. And I knew him from the weird dot. And... I think it was either the second time we came in, my landlord then, Stanley, picked us up from the airport and we drove across this car park and he saw us and he come running after us. David, 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 welcome back. And he carried the bags upstairs. I see. That is a thing that's stuck there. It's a good, you know. But all of them, I mean, in the little bar where you just met us, that's not like it was, is it, man? It's not the same anymore. But the lads that's working there, we watched as little lads. I see. We, not the man that's running now with the beard. Yeah, he was a little lad. I see. Now he's there. And now his little lad is running the store okay. with his mother around him. <laughs> okay. So all of them, and, and little Caesar, he, he was only a young lad. All of them. Uh, so we watched them all grow up. And the same, the, the main popular bar, which yeah. is now closed. The, Which um, one? Public bar, it's upstairs. Okay. Shandakam was the man, lovely man. Beautiful man. Chandrakant. Yeah. Thank Chandrakant, yeah. Thank Beautiful you. man. Really good character. And his son grew up, and his son was only like this one. Yes. Cheeky lip, cheeky lip, so he was you. really cheeky. Brother. Thank but he's grown up now, and he's took over the business because Chandrakant died. And uh, he's running it. Well, he's, he's shot that, but he's opened a new place down Bagger somewhere. He's doing well, well, except for the pandemic, of course. He's doing, he's doing well, and, uh, and it's good to see. You play and football? You play football at any No, place? no, I don't play football. No, never, never been a sports. Okay. No. Okay. Like no. I, I like to watch a bit of cricket, but that's it. Especially when he's Indian playing England. <laughs> <laughs> so, any places you remember here? Any, any iconic places or, uh, you know, bars or shops or clubs or whatever? That's a difficult one. There's so many. I see. Now, I can, I, it's not very hard to answer that because uh, places, all places, are all been great. I've enjoyed everywhere I've been. But any place you would go to many times, go back again? Well, if you're talking about bars, one was Bob's Inn. Bob's Inn. Yeah, and he sadly died last year or the year before. That was a good venue because it was a proper old going bar. And that's where the story, which is, is we don't think it's true, but there's a book written about. Uh, Lord Lucan, you, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, and, Lord and Lucan. It, yeah. And it was said that he played 
played the backgammon in there, but it's not really true. Lord, he's got a picture of him. Lord Lucan, yeah. I forget his name, was this British guy who went yes, missing. But, yeah, he went missing, yeah. And they wrote a book saying that he might have been in Goa. That's yeah. right, but he, he wasn't seen. No. Okay. No. But it was a good story, good yarn. <laughs> Uh, having said that, a lot of interesting people did come to oh, Goa. Yeah. Like I yeah. met, yeah. I met this guy called Captain Captain Crunch, who was a guy from America who discovered that if you take yeah. the the, yeah. the uh, twenty five pence or five pence yeah. five cents yeah. whistle form that they gave it free to the kids, you could actually trick the phones in the sixties mm -hmm. to get free international or national trunk mm -hmm. calling. So he was a hacker. John Draper, if I'm not mistaken, John Draper. So there were many interesting guys. Of course, oh, yeah. Charles Obraj also came yeah. to Goa, and uh, yeah. and uh, so did. Uh, there's, there's lots of guys. There's another story I can remember. There was one guy. He got a big beard, and he come with his cup. He was begging, but he did it with a smile. One second. Huh? I mean, you know, have, a, have a squeak. Yeah, yeah, please. please. The camera's protesting and says it wants a break. Is the, is the light good enough? Or not? Yeah, yeah, the light is fine. Maybe we should also. Oh. Yes, no, no, no. How is it? Somebody is she, old, old she old any better tonight? Not too good, but uh, ah. we'll go back and see. Where's uh, Jan? Well, she didn't know what to do, and then when I found her, I said, she said, oh, it's too late, I'm not bothering her. So I went down the street on my own. I opened the, opened the fine sink here, you know. The mic's not good enough. Mm. Yeah, I, I just bought a little clip on the mic. I see. Yeah, it works very well. Some of them are pretty amazing, yeah. That's a nice it's just a battery. Okay, fine. So, so sorry, David. What were you saying about about uh, the oh this this about? this beggar? Yeah, it was a good looking man, big fellow, big grey like beggar? a farm. beggar. No beggar, beggar. He yeah. was begging. Okay, okay. But it, he got a bad up. No, no, no. But one night we met him in the bar. Yeah. And he got a big bottle of money and he said, hey. We can bring it. So he bought us all the drink. I see. I see. <laughs> and every time we saw this man, he'd come up. Yeah, yeah. So it made it funny in the fact that this this guy was making a good living out of begging, but he did it with a smile, and he realised that we knew, and we took the notice, and we laughed. And he's got, yeah. mm -hmm. That's another character, isn't it? Yeah. There's loads of things like that, but of course, when somebody asks me, I, I, you know, you can't think, and then all of a sudden. Like this film I made is many people, many, many that I haven't put in because I didn't think about it after. But at the same time, if you put them all in, it'd be too, too much. So I put the main people in. And the main people was to put in was the people I met here. First, these fa this family downstairs, because they, I mean, I'm on my own this time, my wife's at home. She has looked after me, she's fed me, absolutely. We're a family, you know. So obviously they had to come in and then mention the taxi drivers, those in the bars who grew up and I watched the kids grow up so I'm quite proud of these young men that which I've seen as child. Uh, so as I say, uh, the characters are just fantastic, you know, there's that many of them. Um, I mean, when I go back to Britain, I walk down my main street be lucky if anybody says hello to you, you know. If you see someone you know, but everybody's rush, rush. where so many uh, taxi drivers standing on the side there waiting. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they got the signs. So yeah, it's it's a, it's, it's a different language yeah. and it's a different oh, yeah. uh, culture. Just the other day, someone was complaining that people in Goa don't wish strangers in that sense. No, if you're if you're passing by someone on the road, you you won't say you're not expected to say good morning. Yeah. But uh, once they get to know you, it's different. Oh yeah, that's it. most people will speak, and even if they don't understand you, it's a no. Yeah. 
Uh, and I say, people cross the road to speak to you. And another thing, nearly all of them remember my name. I see. And of course, I don't remember their name. <laughs> I can't remember their name. Uh, another little story for you. I uh, went to a little place around the corner from uh, down by the bottom of by the steps. There's a little coming by there. I've been in there, but very rare. And I went in, and it's just a basic bar. And the guy said, David, how are you? And I know the face. But of course, two, three years older, obviously. And he said, I said, I know the face, but and he told me his name, which I forgot again to see. And he said, you took picture of my father. And I remembered. He was one of the elderly fishermen that used to go into the public bar. And he died. Well, he, had, he was on my roll of film. And I blew it up for him, and he had it printed, and he remembered that. So while I was in the bar, I got my phone out, and all these pictures were on the phone. And of course, all, all of a sudden, there was a crowd of them all around. Oh, no, that's my dad, that's my dad, that's so-and-so. It was fantastic. So, we was made so welcome people, because... People don't do these things, right. no? They record the not That's right. And I think a lot of it was because they only, not only saw their fathers or granddads or whatever, but also because I had still got the pictures. I had taken them and kept them. Now, most governments, once you're gone, you're gone. They don't seem to keep pictures. They don't seem to, uh, you know, that's it. So, I think... But that's my feeling, but I think they really appreciate it. Now, every time I go past some the place... Some of them keep, some of them, you know, the bigger families, the more richer families, they do yeah. keep. But they're not sharing it, they're not seeing it, people are not seeing yeah. it. So when they take it out, it comes out as a big surprise, no? Mm. Mm. I guess. But these are the guys from, uh, from yeah. the lowest level. Yeah. And it's they don't have people. access, you know, in those oh, days yeah. especially. Today, today everyone has a phone, but still... You want some more? No, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. People are still not clicking and still not sharing. We must have a look at your pictures. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yourself. Yeah, yeah, interesting, very interesting. Yeah, you'd have to pick through it and see. Maybe it. He's with I mean, the next the big no. The, yeah. 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 the next big goes on about the the bars starting up, and then these downstairs they built a new hotel, uh, and so on, and then towards the end. I close it all. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Some storm. There is a storm. There's something come down, isn't it? No, you can't get it. There. No, we'll leave it anyway. <laughs> Let it stay there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, what happens is uh, lost me track now. The the story you were telling us the story. Yeah, I'm trying to think. <laughs> That's just. <laughs> Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, he opens the restaurant and so on and all that. And uh, then uh, when I finish with actually Goa, I do then what I call My India in four minutes. So I have a map of India and I've got all the plots and the one comes in, say Mumbai, and a little shot to the main, yeah. the, gate, the gateway. Gateway of India. Okay. Two, the gateway, two of India. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Yeah, okay. so, and then I roll all the way down to Kerala, and it's just sort of two pictures. Two so. How did you all meet up? How did you all meet up? In the bar, of course. Yeah. In the bar. Yeah. Yeah. And he told me he takes photographs. Yeah. Photograph. yeah. Oh, we eat it off. We eat it off straight away. And, uh, I can tell you, Mario has given me a new lease of life by here saying, you should write a book. Yeah, I was thinking uh, about the same thing. Anyhow, I tried and <laughs> many pieces of paper. No Just good. write it from your heart, you know, write it yeah. from your heart. But it please. didn't work. He's done the next big thing. He's not a writer, yeah. but yeah. he's a photographer, he's a Ooh. filmmaker. That's right. So he made his life story into... As a film. So all my life story is all similar to that. Yeah. My whole life is like, from where I was born, it's all about that, and in yeah. pictures, and so on, through the years. Uh, and, but he 
given me the idea, and it was some time after, and I thought, I'd never go. And I used to go down to the bar every night at home, read this. And they go, yeah, but you, you shouldn't say that, you shouldn't say that. And I thought, oh. and they're ripping me out. So I thought, that is no good. And then I suddenly thought, ah, I can explain it better by showing pictures. And even if they spell or say the name wrong, yeah. it's not so bad as spelling it wrong yeah. or printing it wrong. And I think it will. I mean, I've done that over and over and over. And the problem is, I suddenly, you know, I've got a text in front of me, and then I, I go and say the wrong word. I'm this is the wrong season you've come to Goa in, isn't it, David? Pardon? This is the wrong season. Yeah. It's, it's oh, yeah. summer. Yeah. Yeah, but you couldn't yeah. stay away after two years. Yeah. Normally, normally you come in which season? No, we normally come uh, sort of October to March. I see. Yeah. And we plan to do it next year. But I don't know at the moment because uh, my wife's not ill, he's quite ill. Okay. And now I've, they told me I've got an operation on the bottom of my spine. So, you operation? Yeah. I've been to the doctor today and he's had the test from the scan. Okay. And there's damage at the bottom of the spine. Okay. So that's just finished me, I mean, so I've got to get over that.